All right, so we want to jump into the kitchen and we want to lighten things up in the summer because our clothes and our hair and, and even our food really need to lighten up so that we can really stay cool. So Chef Laura from Celebrated Cuisine has a recipe that fits the bill with lighter but yet still delicious. And this one is called... An Asian-inspired seafood cocktail. Good to see you. Nice to see you, too. I didn't give you a little huggy I when you walked in. It's been a few weeks. So... Asian inspired yes. cocktail. Yes. And why would you say it's Asian inspired? What are the ingredients that make it Asian inspired? Well, for starters, instead of cooking the shrimp, and I also use a little bit of langoustine, which is baby lobster tail, basically. Um, instead of cooking it in a normal, like an Old Bay seasoning or some other kind of spice blend that we normally associate with the shrimp cocktail, I use lemongrass. So dried lemongrass, which I put into the water, which is this mm -hmm. right here. And if you smell that, it has a slight lemony flavor. Yeah. So I, I love the scent of lemongrass, even in my like like body products, like my lotions and potions? Yes, yes. Well, so there you go. And then for the marinade, what I just decided to do at that point was to marinate the seafood for a little while. So you can do it for 30 minutes, you can do it up to five hours if you want. So all the ingredients I picked for it were also Asian. So, okay. But they're Asian inspired. I didn't have one particular country in mind. So we have fish sauce, which is Thai. We have rice vinegar, which is a Japanese, Chinese as well. Uh, I also included a little bit of this, which is called furikake. It's nomi... nomi Suri furikake, which is actually seaweed? a combination of seaweed and sesame seeds. Okay. And so it adds a little bit of a salty flavor as well as some savory from the Did sesame seeds. Did you make seed. that or it comes like that? It comes like that. You can get it at an Asian food store, at an Asian food grocery store. So it's just like a seasoning mm. blend that looks just like this. Okay, cool. so nori fumi furikake. So try to say that three times fast. I will totally I don't even think I want to say it once, to be honest with you. I also put in here a little bit of sesame oil, just a tiny, tiny bit for flavor, and then also this stuff right here, which is called a Maggie seasoning. And this is actually found easily at the grocery store. It's usually on the top shelf in the Asian food section. But this is a um, actually a vegetarian way to add a little bit of... Um, that uh, more of that umami, that, that sixth flavor mm -hmm, sense mm -hmm. uh, to the dish. So this has been marinating in that. But what we're going to do now is make our cocktail sauce. Okay. okay. So what we have for the cocktail sauce now is going to include the following. We're going to start off by adding a little bit of canola oil because we're going to cook off some shallots. Okay. So we have shallots. We also have Thai chili or you can use serrano pepper, either okay. one. So I want to point out though, if you want to make this super spicy, then you want to include the seeds. If you're not much for the spice factor, you, you either skip this dish or you just make sure you pull out the seeds. Okay. And a little helpful hint, because I found this out the hard way. Don't put your contacts in after. Good one. Yes, I that, that too. One. Yes, and don't put your hands in your mouth. But if you actually touch your hair, the oils in your hair will take off some of the spice from your hands. I don't know how often you wash your hair, but... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> plenty often, plenty often, especially in the dog days of summer. Seriously. So what we're going to do, we heat up the oil. We'll add our shell. I'm going to put you to work over here, of course. Of course you And are. I'll have you start to cook that. And we're just going to start to caramelize it um, in just a little bit. So, yep. With so your... many different types of oils that are available, and like the one that would come to mind with this particular dish, I don't know why, it would be like a sesame oil. Mm -hmm. Why did you choose canola oil for, for the shallots? Because I don't want an, um, any sesame flavor in the sauce. I okay. already have it on the marinade. Okay. And it's, actually, it's a great question because People automatically reach for the olive oil now when they cook. Right. But what they don't realize is that depending on the dish, they might be infusing an olive flavor to the dish that shouldn't be there. So canola oil is a very neutral oil. It's like vegetable oil. It's and not it's going also to it's still health. Like it still has the same health properties pretty much as olive oil, right? Um, different health properties, but not but always good for you. We're okay, not using right. saturated good, fat. Good stuff, right. Yeah. Another choice would be grapeseed oil. Okay. Because grapeseed oil would also provide some health benefit and also not impart too much of a heavy dose of a flavor that we don't want to have in the dish. So while you're cooking that, I'm going to add our Thai chilies to it, okay, in this case our serranos actually. Now didn't you tell me one time you know when you're kind of moving in the right direction with your with your shallots when you start to smell, mm -hmm. like it was like a smell? We yeah. call them aromatics. As soon as you smell them cooking, you know that you can move on to the next step depending on what you're trying to, okay. trying to prepare. So now we, now we take a little, uh, we veer off course a little bit. This next thing that we're going to add is dry sherry. So we could also use mirin, which is an Asian rice wine, mm -hmm. um, cooking, and, but we're going to use dry sherry for this today. We're going to let that cook for a second. We're going to cook it down just so that most of that liquid's become evaporated, but we'll still see some of the oil in the dish. Okay. Ooh, then that we one only. Funny. <laughs> what was like, that was sherry? Okay. So it was sherry. So now you can see the liquid's almost all the way gone. It, it doesn't take very long. So I'm gonna, we're going to add our apricot preserves. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to have you whisk this time. So I'm going to change your tool. And while you're doing that, we're going to add our flavor elements also. So we're going to just add a little dash. <coughs> That's sure this. I got in my throat. And so did the Thai chili, I'm sure. 
And then now with caution, we're going to add one of my favorite ingredients. This is an Indonesian condiment. It's called sambal olek. You can also find this at the grocery store. Um, it's related to what we call the rooster or sriracha, which is the tall bottle with the green cap on it. You do not it. have to tell me what sriracha is. I love that stuff. Well, this... I love it on my sushi. This you will love on your sushi, too, because this has also... It has, you can see the seeds from the chili pepper oh, in yeah. here, but it's also got a few other flavoring elements. So we're just going to add a little bit. Now, here's a word of caution around sambal, okay? This increases in its heat quality as it sits. So when you first taste something and you think, oh, that's not so spicy, well, if you keep adding it, later on, I promise you, you will be, um, your hair will be on fire, okay? So <laughs> you just want to be careful okay, with that. Okay, this one has a big preserve. Like, oh, good. Is, is that's that, right. Oh, that's, that's a good? chunk of apricot. Yeah. Yeah, so there's our authentic, we use apricot in our sauce. Okay, just in case people doubted you. Exactly. Which they might. Which they might. I, and, and you awesome. know, we, we, you don't want to doubt me because then no you doubters. have the wrath of Chef Laura. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to let that simmer for just a few minutes and it'll thicken slightly. And what's really nice too is you can make this entire thing ahead and let the shrimp hold overnight if you want to and the sauce will hold for several days. And you can use this also as a glaze on other fish dishes if you want. All right. Okay. Well, hang tight. Yep, we got more to do. We got more to do. And then I'm going to ask you about all these sauces because... There's quite an investment here, and I want to make sure that we understand why we're investing in all these things and how we can use them. Excellent. Okay. Uh, step two, a little bit later in the show, Andy.